Um, but this is an interesting one. I really enjoyed this exchange. And shout out to Olayemi. I thought she did a great job on here. She's been doing a great job in general on the Hill so far. So looking forward to seeing more from her in the future. But again, without further ado, let's take a look. Celebrities Macy Gray and Bette Midler are being accused of being transphobic. Gray, who is best known for her hit song, I Try, received backlash for a comment she made during an appearance that aired Monday on Fox Nation's Pierce Morgan Uncensored after discussing the topic of trans athletes. And I, I will say this, and everybody's going to hate me, but as a woman, just because you go change your parts doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. You feel that? I know that for a fact. Midler sparked controversy when she tweeted on Monday, Women of the world, we are being stripped of our rights over our bodies, our lives, and even our name. They don't call us women anymore. They call us birthing people, our menstruators, and even people with vaginas. Don't let them erase you. Every human on earth owes you. Oh, Joe. They're going to be in trouble. Uh, I uh, agree with them. <laughs> no, personally. I agree with them too, but you can't say yeah. these kinds of things in certain progressive circles uh, at all. Look at J.K. Rowling. Look at you know any number of other uh, perfectly you know liberal people uh, on the issues, and then because they don't talk about uh, gender with the new language that's acceptable to a small number of deranged activists, you get uh, you get yourself in trouble. And it happens time and time also, again. Also, just to break in really quickly, if J.K. Rowling had made maybe one or two off-color comments that people found to be problematic, you know, people probably would have forgiven her and moving moving on. Let's be honest. The problem is, you know, we're talking about deranged. J.K. Rowling every single day is out here, you know, fighting this culture war against the trans community and espousing these turf talking points over it. Like that's literally her whole shtick at this point, day after day after day. Follow her on Twitter. You'll know what I'm saying. Again, it's not just some one-off comment. It's like what her whole identity has become at this point. So anyway, you want to talk about deranged. She's the deranged one. And, but uh, I, that was, I didn't know uh, May, uh, Macy Gray uh, had that view. I guess I didn't know Bette Midler um, either. Uh, and may, actually Macy Gray was making the kind of stronger view, right? She was sort of denying um, uh, the trans category entirely. Whereas I, I guess Bette Midler was just objecting well, to the, 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 la the, the way the language is used, which kind of everyone thinks is crazy. I don't but. think it's about denying the trans category. I mean, look, I, I have, I'm totally and completely supportive of trans rights. And I am as well. So it's not about that. It's that it's a different category. Right. So, you know, I can support, I can be supportive. I could say, you know, and I have trans fr friends that I am, am very support. I try to be supportive of as best as I can. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they would tell me I'm not because, but you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's trying to be supportive. It's saying, yes, I, I believe that you should have rights. Um, but you're not a woman in the same way that a biological woman is a woman. There's different experiences right. that we don't share. I don't know their struggles at all. I mean, besides the conversations I have with those that I've been friends with while they were trying to transition or thinking about coming out and all of that, I understand this. I've, I've heard the stories of the struggles, but I can't actually And they haven't had the same struggles that. you've had. Exactly. They can hear about it, but they don't know the exact way it is being a woman, being born a woman biologically and having to go through certain things. So they're just different categories, equally needing rights. Nobody's, I think, uh, wanting, right. I mean, maybe there's some people, but I'm not looking and you're not looking to rob them of any rights. We're wanting to extend rights, but at the same time, recognizing that there are different categories. I simply do not understand the need or investment to exclude them, period. This is just an imaginary oppression. This whole, oh, they're coming for us as women. You're a woman and your womanhood is unchallenged based on whether or not trans women are women too, or whether or not they want to be included or considered when we discuss women. Uh, a conversation about, you know, the language. You can't say the word woman. We can say the right. word women. We can say the word. As, say as the someone, word. I don't know about the two of you, but as someone that is firmly in the leftist space with a leftist platform that knows all of the people that you consider crazies and deranged activists and progressives, you see me say women all the time. I talk about abortion. I say women. I say women's issues. We talk about that, and it's not a problem. So this idea that the entire community are just crazies, unhinged, that won't let you say women is not true. Are there are there some individuals outliers? Sure, absolutely. But what I think in general is trans people, the trans community does have. They are they are negatively impacted. They're le not recognizing their personhood and exposes them to lots of danger. We saw so much trans, so much violence in the trans community, specifically trans black women are killed at like four times the rate um, of but other not because they're trans. Actually, that is not, that's not true, actually. Not they're they're not being killed because that's... of anti-trans bigotry. They're yes. being killed because they're they're in sex work and and. And why, what do you think? Yeah, they're all just a bunch of degenerates. That's why they're getting killed at higher rates. Yeah, thanks, Robbie. Anyway, uh, to quickly address her other point, too, which is that because Kim and Robbie say, oh, well, you can't even say women these days. You know, you can't even say the word women because these crazy lefties have, you know, hijacked the discourse or whatever. Bull fucking shit. 
Bull fucking shit. As Olayemi said, and I will, you know, share my experiences as well too, as someone who's on the left, who exists in a lot of left spaces. You know, I'm a recent college graduate. I was, you know, not uh, even a year or two ago, uh, getting my degree at college. Had a lot of woke peers. Had a lot of woke professors. Not a single goddamn time did I ever hear someone use the term birthing person or person that menstruates instead of the word woman? And not once did I hear anyone pushed back upon for using the word women, uh, including from, again, even the wokest peers and the wokest professors that I had at college and also on Twitter, online, anywhere else that I've ever existed as a lefty. I have never once seen someone called out for using the word women. And frankly, I've heard Kim Iverson and Robbie Suave say the term birthing person more in this clip than I have ever in my entire life outside of this, you know, conversation. So they're act they're creating this boogeyman like the right wing always does. You know, they set up this fucking straw man uh, and act like it's this huge outrage that it's this big scandalous fucking problem. Um, when in reality, it's all just a bunch of ginned up nonsense that this is not an actual problem facing the fucking society. This is not an actual issue. You're just fear mongering about it and pretending that it is in order to serve your own fucking agenda. 100%. And look, how many protests did we see? What well, one I, I would say, do you, do you want know another reason why nobody on the left has a problem with the fucking term women woman uh yeah we we just if you you, you say you're a woman I, I i i i accept that and and guess what we will call you a woman and you are a woman great let's move on like wh what the fuck like why would you do the the narrow times that you will hear somebody with our politics say the term birthing people is when we're talking about access to reproductive health care and then in which case yeah i do think anybody that gives birth needs access to that and yeah sometimes that does include trans men sorry that breaks your fucking heart for some reason i don't know what the fuck to tell you sometimes that includes non-binary people and so when we're having a broad discussion about who specifically needs access to these rights i want to include an umbrella so that fucks like you don't try and exclude trans men who need access to this health care again we're not that's we're not getting it that's still bad that's still trans terrible trans women are exposed to no there are lots of trans women that have very much so been killed based on men's anger at realizing what is their own sexual attraction to these women lots. and determining that they're trans Robbie, if you want us, if you want you, if you want me to, I will, I will, I will, I will do us the favor of having a radar on it one day, right? But what I'm saying is, this is a community that is 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 uh, uh, negatively impacted. They are discriminated against, and I do not see how it hurts us. It harms us as women, as biological women, as cis women, to include them in our struggles and to not go out of our way to exclude them, to suggest, oh, how they're not women, and to rob them of this person. But it simply doesn't cost us anything. My woman status is not affected. Kim's woman status is not affected. So there's no need for Macy Gray, who no one has heard from other than that song and a terrible rendition of that. I do that. like that song. And it's, yes, that it was it was a long time ago. It was before I was told by it Ginger. Was a long time ago. Besides. Yeah. That song, the As Told by Ginger theme song, and a terrible well, rendition I, I, of the national well, anthem I'm, most I'm recently. Curious. No, did you love what, the song? That's what. What? No. What are your What are your thoughts on Leah Thomas? Leah Thomas is that is That's that the, 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 the swimmer? The swimmer. I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't have any. I don't have any problem with that. I don't. And I also. I, I want to say this. I think a lot of the criticisms, especially when you see people who didn't care at all about women's sports, don't, don't care nothing about women's sports in general, even on a professional level, let alone on the school level or these lesser competitions, all of a sudden they care so much about women's equality when it comes to excluding and speaking negatively about um, um, these trans athletes. And a lot of, and I will say this too, I saw a lot of positive support from other other girls and women that compete against her and compete in the arena that did not feel the need to go to these exclusionary routes. So I just think a lot of it is rooted in <laughs> it's exclude it's excluding people who have an who have an advantage because of their that, I've seen I've first oh. of all I've I don't I, I like to I, I do myself the service of not pretending like I'm an expert on all things and like I have the language and stuff in front of me right now. But I have seen people that actually are and talk about science and stuff say that is not the case. But what I'm saying is I don't have a problem. And you know why? Right. Because me, like a lot of these people that comment on this, don't care nothing about these sports or anything. What is the motivation between all, all of the hubbubaloo? I think the, the motivation is negative. So for well, me, I, I care. And I know a lot of women who care if you're if being feeling pressured to use the phrase birthing persons yeah, or menstruators, right. which is now something that elite elite dialogue is adapting. Is that you see it appearing places. The you vast, see the ACLU struggling with, with the even language to describe the people affected by curtailing of First abortion of all, rights. I just, disproportionately I wanna, LGBT. I want to say this. Disproportionately overall, LGBT. Overall, you very much so still seeing women's issues, things like abortion and stuff being discussed as a women's issue. That is the vast majority of people are still discussing it in that way. But let's pretend I concede to, oh, the language. Language pressures, 
being pressured to use different language, a more inclusive language for the for the for the positive impacts of others and people in groups that you know are going through a negative experience in the community. That is not oppression. That is not going to kill you. The idea that oh my God, I mean, like I have to say this language that might include these other kinds of women. That's just not the worst. Doesn't thing. that go both ways though? Because for, for the also the people for, who are saying no, because you have it, to call no, me a because, woman rather than a no, trans because they're woman. explaining the same way y'all said earlier. Y'all don't know their struggles in their community. They've explained the way and they talk about this ad nauseum the way in which they are negatively impacted by us robbing them of this personhood or not engaging in this language or insisting and excluding them considering them as men even though they're telling you they're women now they are negatively impacted in them so it's not just a feeling and a sentiment it's different and what i'm saying is for us but i'm saying i think women are feeling that same sentiment i don't of being, think of being deprived and i'm of saying their re of recognition and i'm saying as having that, had a unique, unique set of experiences and i'm saying that that is not a real i i don't i don't think that wow. I, that rises to the level of of what they're going through i think what the what the what the cost is for for us as, as cis women, as biological women, what the cost is for us in using that language is not is n does not outweigh what is the risk and what are the negative impacts of us not being inclusive. But nonetheless, I maintain that the majority of these issues are still being discussed as women's issues. It is not true that everywhere, oh, you have to use birthing language or birthing whatever but it is and all these things. It's just not the case. But that, that language is increasing in popularity right. and in usage. I mean, you and can't God deny that. I've never seen it before in my life. And now the other day when I filled out a medical form, that's what it actually said. In a medical document, it actually asked if I was a menstruating or birthing person. It didn't ask if I was a woman. So I do, and that was a, a legitimate lab. I've never seen that, but I don't see the problem with our society adapting to be more inclusive. I don't. I don't see what is the. So I just have to jump in right here. So this is this is, gets down to why I just I just don't understand why this is like this is the like <gasps> the final straw. It's like okay, so I. I go to the doctor's office and she's like, or whatever medical form that she's filling out. And it wants to know like whether or not like my body does this medical thing. Oh, ah, what the fuck? Like if I went to the doctor's office and it asked me on a form, do I menstruate? I would just check no. And I would move on with my fucking life. And like any other reasonable, rational person that's filling out a medical form where it's like, Nope, this doesn't happen to my body. Like, uh, do I have like fucking sleep paralysis? No. Like, uh, do I have Crohn's disease? No. Like, whatever the fuck it is you're filling out on this far. Are you allergic to any medication? No. Like, uh, what the fuck? Like, yeah, maybe somebody who uh, is a fucking trans man and needs to have their fucking menstruation checked out. Well, the, what the fuck? You think they don't have the right to do that, Kim? Is it so fucking persecutory to you to have to check a box when you go to the fucking doctor's office or medical lab or wherever the fuck? You have to be pretty privileged in this country to go because all that shit is expensive as hell anyway um that the the fucking massive thorn in your side is that oh yeah other people can be treated equally here other people can be fucking respected as human beings with decency here and you have to ab abide by it oh god forbid that you're fucking kidding me it just makes you sound like a fucking conceited asshole uh, that's fucking hates trans people I think a lot of people don't that find that language it. more inclusive. They find that right. language really. I think you're seeing like it's the case and sight and almost just like like women are nothing but that is they're a they're they're. That's because you hate of, trans. It has women, never. You know, very, it has never been the case in life that a marginalized group of pairs and starts speaking about their issues and advocating for different ways that we could respond to be more inclusive that you don't see a large pushback. So it is not well, unsurprising. It's not unsurprising I, I mean, to me. I don't, and it, I don't know why we can't extend the boxes. Like, why can't it be male, female, trans male, trans female? Like, right. inter, you know, like, why does it? I don't understand. We can be in inclusive what for is, sure. What, but, but, but also on the flip side of that, what's the problem with them saying with, with, with trans women taking women? What is that doing well, to you? I mean, listen, what, being somebody who's mixed race, for example, when I fill out race forms, I, they, I'm i glad that now I see a lot of boxes. I'm no longer stuck with, am I either white or am I either Asian? That's the way it's been my entire life growing up. There was never mixed race as an option. Now there's mixed race as an option. So now I get to, I get to. Check. Yeah, just like how it used to be, you're either a man or a woman. And now you can have a like, you know, spectrum of different things. You can be a man, a woman, uh, you know, in between, wherever you personally identify or want to express yourself, that's becoming more societally acceptable and you're the one pushing back on it more than you know i get to check either the mixed race box or more than or they say check two if it applies to you and, so but, and that, but Kim, but in that example you were talking about for you you as a biracial person felt like you were being forced to choose this particular box when you would have appreciated having the option of choosing both having it reflected boxes. but trans women trans women are not they are saying that they would like to be able to just be included in women they want to be able to text the women the women box and i'm saying how does that harm me or you allowing trans women to do that 
there, no, it doesn't. And I don't mm. think anybody's arguing exactly. that. If you identify as a woman and you want to check the box as a woman, fine. The issue is with the language right. birthing person. Also, by the way, you know who else would tell you that um, trans women aren't 100% biologically Id uh, identical to cis women? You know who would be the first to tell you that? Trans women. You think trans women don't understand the fact that they have biological differences uh, than cis women? Obviously, they fucking do. They're not fucking stupid people. I'm serious. Talk to a trans person. They will be the first to tell you about all the differences and all the you know different kind of experiences that come along with identifying as a trans individual. No one is like out here pretending that those differences do not exist. Everyone understands this. You're intentionally straw manning this position. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, I, I, and the lengths that people have to go to in order to just live a regular fucking life as a trans person, right? And the barriers that we put up uh, for people to just present and live comfortably, uh, you know, in their own fucking skin. Like, guys, just for a second, like, it's, like I, it's 2022. Do we have to do this exercise again? Imagine you woke up tomorrow in uh, the opposite gender than you are today, right? The opposite one, assuming that, you know, you, you know, you're, uh, you know, living in the skin of, of the body that you're happy with. Other uh, related topic we wanted to get to here. So actor and producer Elliot Page's uh, dead name appeared as a trending topic on Twitter on Tuesday, violating the site's own policy on hateful conduct. So a dead name is is the name a trans person used before coming out. So maybe that's a name from the other uh, gender. And it was listed under the site's trending tab. According to Twitter's hateful conduct policy, users are prohibited from targeting others with repeated slurs, tropes, or other content that intends to dehumanize, degrade, or reinforce negative or harmful stereotypes about a protected category. This includes targeted or misgendering or dead naming of transgender individuals. And this is where it gets kind of insane. Like, I don't even know. I assume everyone watching knows what Elliot Page's name was before I, I like i guess we should not say it because maybe that yes, would violate some know. policy it's a dead name. I mean, but that's crazy why like, is it really I don't understand. Why? all right first of all i just wanted to say they're talking about this twitter censorship issue talking about uh how uh in, in robbie's estimation it's crazy that people got banned on twitter for dead naming elliot page and you know just to be honest i don't think anyone should be censored i'm a free speech absolutist so no i actually don't think anyone technically should have been censored from twitter or any social media platform for basically saying anything no matter how fucking vile it is. In fact, I advocate for those platforms to be nationalized uh, so they do have to be regulated in accordance with the First Amendment. You know who doesn't fucking believe that, though? Is libertarian Robbie Soav. Libertarian. Is this guy now advocating that, what, the fucking state steps in and regulate this private company? Twitter, a 100% private company? Libertarian Robbie Swove is now saying that they should not be able to operate in accordance with whatever the hell their own ideology is? So wh what's your problem, bro? Find a different platform. Let the free market work this out, bro. Why are you advocating for you know a corporation to have to operate under whatever rules you see fit to? It's their fucking decision. It's their bottom line they're looking out for. And your anarcho-capitalist value should be right in line with that. Yeah, well, that's the other big uh, thing. Like, obviously, you and I have argued multiple times that we don't believe in censorship. We don't believe in big tech, uh, you know, over uh, overlords being able to control the dialogue in what is essentially a public square at this point where much of our conversation is happening. We need a free and liberated Internet if we're going to have, you know, free and liberal discourse like the First Amendment guarantees us. I think that you and I are in 100 percent lockstep uh, with that. But, yeah, it is. Uh, the same people who uh, believe in the system of capitalism, who believe in the free market, who believe in the autonomy of these businesses, who are uh, typically the most up in arms about this specific issue and whatever, uh, you know, Twitter decides its terms of use policy is going to be. Uh, but it's also hilarious that every like, you know, uh, Jordan Peterson was going to like die in the fucking uh, sand about this. And then he deleted his tweet because he can't fucking quit Twitter. Like none of these people have any. Same with Dave Rubin. Even. Yeah, Same with Dave Rubin. 100%. They just want to be fucking cruel uh, to this random stranger uh, that never did fucking anything to them uh, but live his life uh, and unfortunately a profession that demands you have an extreme public eye on you. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we can let this clip run out. But, but yeah, again, just keep in mind, these motherfucking libertarians like Robbie, they will al always argue against regulation unless they're arguing to regulate Twitter in order to allow them to be more transphobic publicly. That's the only regulation they support, hilariously. Um, but let's keep going because this is pretty good. 
is that? <laughs> why is that any I crazy? Mean, and if people change their name, call me this. Elliot, call me this. I prefer to be called. Right, by but, this but, to not even be yeah. but to right. not even be allowed to acknowledge that you used to have a different name. What do you need to be able to acknowledge <laughs> that for? Where, how are you suffering? Where's your harm? Where's your oppression? Like also, sorry to cut in one more time, but I want to quickly share my screen so you guys know what Jordan Peterson got banned for because it was not just acknowledging the reality of who Elliot Page used to be. I genuinely do not think that Jordan Peterson would have been banned had he said, you know, the actor formerly known as Ellen Page or Elliot Page, who some people might know used to be Ellen Page. I don't think he would have got banned for that. I straight up do not think if you just acknowledge that, oh, this person at one point identified as this other person, I don't think that would have been uh, banned off Twitter. What Jordan Peterson actually did say that got him banned was first of all, he dead named and said, and Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by a criminal physician. All right. Is that the same thing as just acknowledging who they used to be? Because that's what Kim and Robbie want you to believe. They want you to believe that Jordan Peterson just simply acknowledged the reality that Elliot Page used to be or used to identify as a woman. And now he no longer does. That's what he wants you to think Jordan Peterson was banned for. In reality, this is the transphobic filth that Jordan Peterson and then Dave Rubin. Yeah, Gavin jumped off the stream, but 100%. Look, he'll be back in one second, but this is 100% true. And the reason why they can't just present this as it is and they choose not to present this as it is is because it would be so unpopular because it's obviously just cruel and hateful, right? Uh, there's no way to disguise it as like a free speech crusade the way they always constantly decide, uh, you know, try and, uh, you know, how, it's always a free speech crusade with the right, right? How do they fucking uh, control our elections, guys? They call it a free speech issue. How do they, they uh, you know, how do they buy off at literally every power uh, in uh, government? They call it a free speech issue. And now, uh, in order to subjugate this minority group, they're calling it a free speech issue. Uh, and they'll continue to do that. They called the fucking uh, gay marriage a freedom of religion ish uh, issue. It was not. It was a prejudicial issue. And that's uh, what the Supreme Court at one time sanely ruled it was. But anyway, we can continue. Right. And and again, a lot of trans people, I, I don't think they have an issue with you acknowledging the fact that they are trans, that they transitioned and they used to be uh, they used to identify as something else that they do now. I don't think most people actually have an issue with that. I don't think Jordan Peterson would have been banned if he had simply acknowledged that. The problem is that he actually did engage in what is very clearly and obviously transphobia, if not just straight up hate speech. Again, not only dead naming Elliot Page, uh, but also saying that her gender affirming or sorry, his gender affirming surgery was criminal. So yeah, clearly that's fucking transphobic as shit. Obviously, stop strawmanning this issue. Uh, again, I don't think they would have been banned had they just simply acknowledged the reality of Elliot Page's former name or identity. Um, and again, I don't frankly think that anyone should have banned should have been banned on Twitter at all. I don't advocate for anyone's censorship pretty much under any circumstance. Um, but that being said, uh, again, you're a libertarian, Robbie, and Twitter has made it pretty clear what their TOS is. You know, if if they said, you know, you're not allowed to post racial slurs and then someone gets on Twitter and starts spamming the N word and then they get bland, banned. Are you going to go out there and be like, this guy's a martyr for free speech? Because knowing what the TOS was, he went out there and, you know, jumped off the cliff anyway. Obviously not. That would be fucking ridiculous. So why is it any different now? And also, I would just like to add that, you know, Jordan Peterson is 100% a free, mar 100 a free market ca a capitalist. He has argued for it time and time and again. And he's, uh, you know, uh, reaping what he sowed, even though Gavin and I are principally opposed to uh, censorship. Again, he's argued for the fact that, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, companies should be able to regulate themselves, so to speak. Person lived as a different person for a long time, decades. And so to say that suddenly we all have to pretend like those decades didn't exist and that that person wasn't that person for those decades. You're not forced is, to me I to pretend that you just can't. I, mean, I understand. You, you just can't say it out loud? No, you can talk. <laughs> right, right, Why right, are we pretending crazy. like that is what's happening here? It's very simple. That this is person, what's happening. There's, there's a trans man now. Elliot Page, that is their name. That sure, is the name that right. they go by. I, 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 used, I said their dead name and I said Elliot Page. Dead. Exactly. Absolutely. Their dead but... name is their dead name. They don't go by that anymore. They find it dehumanizing or diminishing to their personhood to be called that. And that is what it is. It's not uncommon. People change their names all the time and we use the different names that they with, that they go by. Right, it but happens. then if somebody goes, well, who's that? I go, oh, they used to be X. Like, I would fill like, them in. And you can't like, do what? that on social media. Is that what they got banned for, Robbie? Is that what they got banned for? No, it is fucking not. Jordan Peterson did not say Elliot Page was once known as Ellen Page. No, that is not what he got banned for. He got banned for literal 
fucking outrageous and undeniable transphobia. Which is why he continues to obfuscate from re the reality of what happens, by the way. This is not coincidental. Yeah, because of this policy. Did you get banned from calling Prince Prince even after he changed his name to a symbol? It's I mean, that's not what the we're same. We are comparing apples and I vegetables because be, I literally, because this is a trans person, let me explain this. The name, the dead name reflects a person and identity they do not recognize. They do not recognize. They find it uh, uh, psychologically harmful to be seen well, in that way. Prince they've moved too. on. I mean, maybe he right. felt like being called <laughs> All right. Prince was. I mean, we're I've been explaining all right, this is such horseshit, and it honestly, I get why she's getting pissed off here because there, you can't have a good faith conversation with that. There is not the same thing as like somebody's personal identity and like the fact that like, oh, he goes by Eminem now, bro. You can't call him Marshall Mathers. Sorry, uh, like you know, like there's a difference between somebody's like fucking stage name, right, uh, and their name that they perform music under, right. And their birth name, which they still legally use for literally fucking everything. And the the Prince of the case of Prince was this is actually a corporate criticism. He had to legally change his name for fucking uh, uh, legal reasons. He changed his name into a symbol uh, for you know it, it wasn't about his personhood. It wasn't about it, it was it was completely unrelated to that. It was actually about the record business, all kinds of oh, shit like that. Hey, go ahead, listen, go go ahead, go forth, go forth smartly, go. I, I think it's not, I think it's a really weird for especially for a for a, a famous person a like a, a a person of some notable public significance to be dis formally disallowed from talking about some public and no we're, we're not You're saying not this is some embarrassing secret about that we're trying to spare them from I mean, no this is a public this are, person was in movies you are was, not, in, was under this name it's under obviously this gender very, identity for, let's not Listen, for the dead name to trend, for something to trend, people have to use, be using it massively. It has to be being discussed. Let's not act like we don't know where that comes from. If we know that this is now a trans, a trans person, they go by Elliot Page, and there are a, a large amount of people calling them by their dead name, so much so that it trends, there is a deliberacy in there meant to offend this person because you know they do not go by that anymore. I don't know what is this big. Well, and that, anyone, and like if, if anyone was continuing to use it and not using the new name just to be you know provocative or mean spirited right i mean, I guess i i use right. i, I would use the name the person wants to use now mm -hmm. and i would recognize their gender identity now mm -hmm. i but i i, I will I, I do not think we should be for for a public person for someone who is well known to the people for like for sake of clarity or for sake of biography Bro, mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want you can go out on the main street square and shout the dead name of Elliot Page as loud as you want. You could stand there all day and do that, and you're not going to get arrested. Uh, no one's going to hurt you. You can do whatever the fuck you want, bro. All that happened was that Twitter enforced their TOS, which is something you pretend to care about as a free market libertarian. Again, you have no. there has been no infringement on your freedom. You can go outside right now and scream it from the top of your fucking lungs. No one will do a goddamn thing. What you're dealing with right now are the consequences of a private company enforcing their terms of service. And by the way, not even against everyone that was saying Elliot Page's dead name. They banned people for being blatantly fucking transphobic, which, by the way, again, I'll say it for the hundredth time. I'm not even in favor of. I'm a complete free speech absolutist. But you're the motherfucker who's a libertarian. You're the motherfucker who pretends to care about corporations and private companies' rights to enforce their policies however they want. You're not against national. You're not for nationalizing these companies and regulating them in accordance with the First Amendment like I am. You're the goddamn one that sticks up for their right to do this stuff. So, you know, if you want to join the socialist team and start advocating for the policies that would actually prevent censorship, that's fine with me. But as of now, you're basically just betraying your very own stated principles as a free market libertarian. Yep. Knowledge that they used to have a different name. You can it acknowledge that you know they to say that we're but not you see how, But do you see how we, we sat right. here and we had this whole discussion. We acknowledge that they used to have a different name. We acknowledge that they had this life before that, but we never called them the, the name. Well, no, it's, it's that, tiptoeing around it's because, because of the rules. It's that simple. It's you're not, but we're, you're we're not, not allowed, allowed We had the whole conversation. <laughs> yes. If, what is the problem with that? You're not allowed to call somebody by a name that they don't go That's by anymore. Crazy. Big deal. We no, it's not crazy. We shouldn't be not allowed to say what a person was. You are allowed. You can go outside and say it as much as you want. It's just on Twitter where they're enforcing their TOS, you fucking idiot. Idiot, Jesus Christ.
people pretend that the left has this victim complex. You know, we're, oh, people on the left are always bitching about microaggressions and all of these, you know, all, all oh, the, the fucking oppression Olympics and all this stuff. And then the minute one of these goddamn conservative fucking losers gets banned on Twitter, it's the end of the goddamn world. It's fucking 1984 all over every single goddamn time. I'm so fucking sick of this shit. For God yeah, forbid you, you not be banned. allowed to call somebody by something they don't want to go by anymore because because right. you're, you're right having, to call them what you want to call them. If Donald Trump, Trump decided own, he just Trump wanted to be called the greatest that. of all time, we, we, would, we would just move over to that and be like, well, he, we got to respect his wishes. It's not the same. Y'all can, continuously once y'all are clearly invested in pretending like y'all don't understand the significance. No, of I understand it. I did. So go ahead, go ahead. I've already explained it. All right. Well, we've had we've had this one out. So tomorrow on Rising, my. I was saying, interesting debate. I'm glad it happened. You know, even though I strongly disagree with Kim and Robbie, obviously, if you guys can't tell, uh, I I'm still glad this exchange happened because clearly this is a conversation that is happening. Clearly, this is something that people are working through societally and culturally, even though I don't know why it's so fucking hard to, you know, figure out that trans people exist newsflash they always fucking have literally since the fucking beginning of human history there have been trans people it's nothing new but for some reason uh people are acting like oh this is like they're coming out of the sewers they're coming out of the fucking woodwork and all of a sudden there's this mass horde of trans people and closing in on society like bro it's really not that fucking hard to uh you know figure out to get it through your fucking skull but that being said i'm glad this conversation happened anyway shout out to olayemi for uh for holding down the you know uh position that she did in a in a really fierce way honestly and again just to remind everyone this is the tweet that jordan peterson got banned for not only did he dead name elliot page uh he also inferred that her or sorry that his uh gender affirming surgery was crim criminal is that not obviously transphobic as fuck like that's more than just acknowledging the reality of someone's transition right Oh, yeah. And look, the, that's why I, I thought it, you know, it was smart for uh, the discussion to end when it was. It was like, you know, w w you can go around and around and around and around. Clearly, there was an unwillingness to grapple with the fact that this wasn't about acknowledging the fact that Elliot Page is a trans man who once had a acting career of note where they performed, you know, as uh, a, you know, cis woman, right? Okay, everybody knows that that happened. That is literally not news. That has been not news for fucking ever. Like, oh, I saw Juno. Oh, I saw Inception, right? Like, I know, about, I saw Hard Candy, right? I I've seen a lot of these fucking movies, right? Uh, but it it's comp like, like this isn't breaking news or, or anything like that. So uh, the, the, the point that Oli, uh, Oli Yemi made that I thought was really salient was the fact that it was like, you know, uh, clearly, this was a targeted fucking, you know, effort to, you know, humiliate and dehumanize Elliot. Uh, this was done out of spite. This was and, and the cover of it, the cover for all of it was that th somehow this is a free speech issue. There's always a cover for it. And it's like a wink and a nod. It's like, I love the trans community and want them to have every single right. Uh, I just want them to be relegated to over here and I don't want to fucking deal with them ever and I don't want to call them anything like that. That's essentially the argument that all of those people are making. And it's like, but we love them. We're our best. It's like, OK, guys, clearly that's. That's not the case here. Uh, and, and also just the, the unwillingness to uh, grapple with the reality that being called by your fucking name is like the baseline establishment for respect, like just the baseline for humanity, for decency, uh, literally the, the be bedrock of it. And uh, I'm excited to get into this Twitter exchange that we alluded to earlier uh, because I think we have a lot to say about it. Uh, shout out to Nick Cruz for a base tweet that we're about to read. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, put this back up on screen. We briefly talked about it. Um, so again, Olayemi, who was the um, one on the left, obviously posts this clip and says, do not call Elliot Page or any other trans person by their dead names. It doesn't cost us anything to simply respect people's personhoods and call them the name they tell us to, which is you know, obvious. Um, Kim Iverson, of course, responds, the point uh, is whether or not you're allowed to say certain things, you can call Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay and not be banned from Twitter or lose your job. Why should trans receive special treatment because they choose to change their name versus other people who choose to change theirs? Um, and then Kim Iverson was responded to by Socialist MMA, who says... Muhammad Ali literally beat the shit out of Ernie Terrell for refusing to call him Muhammad Ali. He famously shouted, what's my name? What's my name? While taunting him during the fight. He didn't shake his hand or anything after the fight because he was so offended. You are a clown. Could not have said it better myself. Could not have crafted a better response. I think we have a clip 
uh, queued up that you wanted to play, Zach? Yeah, look, I love this response for so many reasons. One, because I think that out, out of all of uh, out of all of the uh, people uh, of the uh, of the twentieth century, maybe ever since he was alive, uh, this man. Uh, stood for decency. He he demanded respect. Uh, he stood for all the right causes. Uh, you know, and and also he was just the personification of masculinity. He was the personification of anything but a triggered liberal. Right. Uh, one of my uh uh one of my favorite quotes from Hunter Thompson is that he he talks about the uh the three meanest people he ever met in his life in terms of functional meanness. Uh, and he lists the leader of the Hell's Angels, Sonny Barger. Uh, the president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, and uh, Muhammad Ali, and, and he was like, he was like, these are uh, towering figures, uh, and, and you know, and Muhammad Ali, he stood for greatness, uh, and he always demanded respect. So for her to try and evoke his legacy as a as a way of justifying her disrespect over to trying to justify her, you know, some sort of strange craving to dead name Elliot Page uh, using one of the greatest. Uh, figures of the 20th century to demanded respect for all oppressed people, not just the black community whom he tremendously stood up for, but oppressed people from all over the world. You're going to try and use him to justify your own bigotry? Get the fuck away from me. That's one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my entire life.